There is so much unraveling just within Australia right now. It's actually scary to see the direction in which our nation is heading. So many decide to show up to the rallies, for instance, to attend the peaceful protests with the idea that the more of us who show up, the less likely it is that our government will just ignore us because after all, their job is to speak for and represent the people, right? But instead, our government throws us into the same pile as extremists. So now what do we do? Hey guys, welcome to Under the Rug, a Christian podcast that addresses the tough conversations deemed too controversial for the pulpit. I am your host, Nalini Tranquim, and today is episode one of season two, yippee Now, a topic I have wanted to bring to the table for some time is the great divide between church and state. Should churches and their people get involved in matters of state? Well, and no pun intended, the world is certainly in a state right now. (laughs) I had to throw that in. (laughs) If we as Christians who have a relationship with God in heaven, okay, the author and the finisher of the faith, the creator of time itself, who bestows wisdom upon his children whenever they should ask, surely we should be bringing that heavenly wisdom and godly counsel to our governments so that our nations can be brought out of the state they find themselves in. Yes? No? Yes, I like to challenge your thought process. To delve deeper into this matter, I am thrilled to introduce you to our guest, Wendy Francis, who is the National Director in Politics for the Australian Christian Lobby. She is a recognised Australian spokesperson for the rights of children and women and an effective campaigner against sexual exploitation in all its forms. Wendy has written four children's books and was a contributing author to the book The Greens Policies, Reality and Consequences, published by Connor Court. Wendy's professional experience includes managerial positions at Griffith University and Queensland Baptists. In 2010, Wendy commenced a movement, Outdoor Advertising Should Be G-Rated, brilliant, contributing to various inquiries and to laws being introduced to stop offensive messaging on Australian roads. I mean, that's fantastic. Wendy is a director and board member of Samaritan's Purse Australia, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association and Vision Media Australia. Wendy has travelled to countries such as Vietnam, Thailand, Bangladesh and Cambodia to oversee projects which seek to rescue women and children from sex slavery and also provide literacy projects amongst rural women, which is breathtaking. She has been married to her husband Peter for 41 years. They have three married children, 10 grandchildren and one little one on the way. Wendy Francis, welcome to Under the Rug. It's so good to be with you, Nalini, and I think um, your introduction before you did that big bio of me was so good. Um, I almost feel like I haven't got anything more to say, but (laughs) we've got a lot to say. We have a lot to cover today, Wendy. My gosh, I just want to say thank you so much for being a part of this and for being willing to be a part of this. I think that's my biggest challenge at the moment is addressing the controversial issues. A lot of people don't want to talk about it, you know. We've got to... We've got to talk about them. Yeah, 100%. For the sake of our children, um, it's so important. Yeah, absolutely. Before we get into today's discussion, do you mind just clarifying what the Australian Christian Lobby is and its function? Sure. Many people get us confused with a political party. We're not a political party. We are there simply to speak truth in public, particularly on political matters, and to members of parliament. So we represent a large body of people. We've got close to 300,000 supporters, um, which, you know, is larger than even the Liberal Party of Australia, to be That's honest. Huge. So it's, it's a large number of people. Yeah. And so we go to the government and we, we seek to speak truth to them from uh, the scriptures. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, you're an advocate, basically, on our behalf. And you and I think what I love the most is, is that you give us the facts, the brutal facts of what's going on in government, and then you empower us then to decide what we feel our role is, you know. I, 
Absolutely. Uh, um, hopefully, certainly empower people to pray as well. There are some people who don't feel that they can actually participate themselves, but we can all pray. And, um, and as we know, prayer is probably, the, well, not probably, it is the most powerful um, armour that we have. It's the most powerful weapon that we have. So yeah. we, we like to keep people informed so that they can really pray intelligently into the issues that we're, we're raising. That's brilliant. That's absolutely brilliant. Okay, well, we're going to get straight into it. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, this great divide. <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay the great divide between church and state why does it even exist i think it exists because we're constantly told um or if we're not told it's it's an unwritten sort of rule that at any aussie barbecue the two topics you don't bring up are religion and politics huh. and so there's this thought process in everybody that you know that's just the taboo subject um, and this is because those two subjects can be really polarizing because yeah. people have um, deeply personal um, and even passionate sometimes uh, thought processes on those two two um, issues so i think that's why the divide is there we okay. feel very strongly if we're involved in politics or involved in in any sort of faith um, then we, we feel strongly about it. And so we steer away from it because we don't want to cause any offence. I think that's why it's there. I think you've hit the nail on the head. Okay, so why does that need to change? It, it desperately needs to change because, um, you know, when we're told don't mix um, religion and politics, then certainly, um, and can I preface that by saying certainly religion should never be used for uh, political purposes. So it should yeah. never be used as some way to acquire power. And I think okay. it has been in the past, yes. that's for yes. sure. But when people say, you know, don't mix religion with politics, what they're really saying is don't bring your faith into the public square where everybody else can see it. They want us to keep our faith um, to ourselves. They want to hide it. They want to keep it in church or in our homes, um, in our hearts. Um, because we have this so-called separation of church and state. But this is, a, this for a start, it's a misinterpretation of what mm -hmm. the separation of church and state actually was meant to, to bring to our society, because what it was meant to bring was the fact that the state, so the government, could not, not actually impose um, their morals or their judgments into the church. So it's, it wasn't as much to keep the church out of politics. It was more to keep the state, the, the government, out of the church. But at the same time, you know, we, we desperately need Christians in parliament. Yeah. And I think it's very biblical that we would say, as Christians, we have to be involved in politics. I mean, God uh, instructed us to be salt and light. He instructed yeah. us to seek the peace and prosperity of the Oof. city where he has placed us. Yeah. These, are, these cannot be done unless we're involved in where the decision-making processes actually happen in our, in our society, and that is in a Parliament House. For good or evil, the decisions are made there in Parliament House for laws that govern our nation. Absolutely. And if Christians are not actually involved in that process, then there's a huge chunk of light and salt and goodness actually being removed from that, that thought process and that decision-making process. And that is not what God intends. Yikes. No, you've worded that perfectly. I think that just gives a whole new perspective on our responsibility as Christians. I mean, it's almost, um, it's almost not applicable what religion you are. This is applicable to people who are a part of a community, which is everyone, regardless of religion. Absolutely. And when you think of um, God instructing us to care for the most vulnerable that's one of the things that he says over and over again well how in our society do we care for our vulnerable yeah. if we're not actually involved in politics because it's through the political process that um, legislation is formed around refugees for instance wow. or around domestic violence you know yeah. our government is talking at the moment about how they're going to introduce a new commissioner wanting to look at how to um, impact domestic violence rates in our nation so this is all this all happens in Parliament House. This all happens at our political level. And if we as Christians are truly wanting to impact and to um, care for the vulnerable, 
then we will be involved in that process to see the best possible outcomes for women and children, for refugees, for the elderly, for the disabled, for these vulnerable people. Those decisions are all made at a, a government, at a political level. Absolutely. I think sometimes, though, what stops people from getting involved is that they hear the term politics and they think, oh, I'm not qualified to get involved. What do you say to that person? I say that every politician is a normal person like you and I. Mm. Um, and I, I sometimes laugh and say they either fold or scrunch the same as you and I fold and yeah. scrunch. And so they are, they are people who are, if they truly are someone who wants the best for their community and for their country, they are people who are wanting to listen to their community. And they want to hear a varied um, number of voices. They want to hear voices from different parts of the community because they want to represent um, the people that, who elected them. And so I say to people, don't be afraid of your politicians because they're just normal people like you and I. Some of them have been checkout chicks. Some of them have been lawyers. Yeah. Some of them have been um, real estate agents. You know, they've all had a different life before they've gone into politics, just like we all do. So in theory, our politicians are there to represent us, the people. They are, and that's how our system of government works. So our system of government works through a democracy, and that is by us electing the people who are going to represent us okay. and it's it's the best system we've got uh, you know there's sometimes i think that we are giving democracy a bad name these days particularly in our education facilities but democracy works when we all work together with it and participate okay can you then you've actually brought that up um, perfectly because it leads me into my next question can you give us an overview then of our political system here in australia that, that's actually a really good question and um and a really important one uh, so thank you for asking that because i think many people go to the ballot box and next year so to 2022 we will be going and voting for our federal parliament and it will probably be around April, May. That's when we're thinking it will be. So when people go to vote, I think sometimes they just think, well, I'm just a number. Um, it doesn't really make much difference what I vote. Uh, and they don't even understand the two different forms that they're filling out. So they've got a small form and a large form, green and, and white. So it's really important um, question because I, I think it's, I wish people understood our system better. Australia has six states and two territories. They each, each of those states has their own constitution. It has their own uh, parliament. It has their own government. It has their own laws. But, but we have a federal parliament over the top of all of that. When we vote next year, we will be voting for the federal parliament. So each state and territory have their own uh, voting system and we go to vote for that. Um, every four years in Queensland, other states may be slightly different, but it's about that time. And then with our um, Australian federal parliament, it's sometimes confusing because we have a queen, but that queen um, is represented by the governor general. And she really is, um, the queen is really there, that she can actually step in and make some decisions, but she's really there as a ceremonial um, head of state. Yep. Um, so then, so what we called is a constitutional monarchy. So if you talk about um, the UK, England, for instance, they are a monarchy. And so the Queen really does rule, but we are a constitutional monarchy. So after a general election, the party who has the most number of members who have been elected, they become the government and the leader of that party becomes the prime minister. And right. the smaller, the, the party with the smaller number of people, they become the opposition. And the opposition's role is to oppose the government. That's actually their role. So sometimes we get tired of the opposition always opposing, but it is actually their role. And that is part of the democracy because they are there to try and challenge and to oppose the government um, in order to get the best possible result. So we have a prime minister. Under the prime minister, we have a cabinet. We have ministers and we have parliamentary secretaries. But then that's, our, that's what we call the House of Representatives. The other house that we have is the Senate. And sometimes they're called the lower house, the House of Representatives and the upper house. And in case of the um, both houses, their job is the uh, House of Representatives 
are usually the ones who introduce laws or uh, regulations. And then once uh, the House of Representatives has voted on that, if it gets through the House of Representatives, it goes to the Senate. And the Senate is really important because the Senate is uh, like a reviewing body. So they are the ones who actually um, check it over, make sure that it's going to be safe for, for the people, make sure it's the best result for everybody. I sometimes um, say to people, it's almost, in church terms, it's almost like you have um, deacons and elders and the deacons are really busy and doers and they get things done and then it goes to the elders for a, an oversight. Um, so it's sort of like a house of review. That's great. So the Senate then... Um, has an opportunity to knock things on the head if, if it's not right. And so there are times when we um, lobby to the House of Representatives and then there's times when we lobby straight to the Senate because wow. we, we see that it's at the Senate that the decisions are going to be made. I've got notes, um, that um, Nalini, that I can actually give you that you could put on. I don't know whether you've got a website or whether you can, you know, if people ask you. I, I've yes. got some notes and a bit of a diagram because I do think... For the sake of um, our children, it's good for us as parents and adults oh, to understand the system. Absolutely. So that we can explain it to them too, because it is a, it's an amazing system. At, a, at its heart, our democracy is all about the freedom of election. It's about um, freedom of assembly. It's about freedom of speech. And so we get the chance to actually decide who is going to govern us. And, yeah. and that's an amazing privilege that many countries don't have. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, that's absolutely huge. Okay, now I remember when we were preparing for today's interview, one of the questions I asked you was, how can we as the general public get involved and voice what we believe should be done, you know, in terms of changes and the bringing in of legislation and what have you. And you said, um, get to know your MP. Can you just talk to us a little bit about that? Because I think even then a lot of people are like, oh, just don't get involved, you know. And it would be surprising or maybe not surprising if we were able to ask everybody who was watching today, what is the name of your federal MP? What is the name of your state MP? Um, I, I would hazard a guess that the majority of people actually don't yeah. know. Yeah. And, and so this is really important. It would be like, again, if you were in church and didn't know who your pastor was or who your youth leader was. And so, and you're trusting your children to go somewhere where you don't even know who they are. Yeah. So it's really important that we know that these people are representing us in parliament. So as I said before, they do want to know what we think. Yeah. And so I suggest to people just, just like sometimes it's a little bit daunting to try and get an appointment to go and see them. And, and unfortunately, most of the time when we get an appointment to go and see our member of parliament, it's because we're not happy about something. So we, we, we find out that this law is going to be passed, that it's going to affect unborn children, for instance, and all of a sudden we, we decide oh, we better go and see our MP and tell him or her what we think. Yeah. But we should have a relationship before then so that when we contact them, they know, oh, okay, yeah, no, that's Nalini. She's, you know, I've seen her before. She's not, she's not crazy. Yeah. Um, happy to see her happy to listen to her point of view right. and so most often the um, birthdays for instance are online of our members of parliament because their oh. bios include their date of birth I try and encourage people send them send a birthday card drop into the drop into the office on their birthday they might not be there but the office would love to have a cake um, and so you know, I realised it, it's your, you know, your boss's birthday today. So I just thought I'd drop in a cake. Please give them my regards with a little card saying who you are. Um, so that when, when it is important and when we do need to go and say, look, hey, we're really worried about this refugee yes. legislation or we're really worried about this prostitution bill that is coming up, um, they know, okay, this is somebody who we can listen to. Um, wow. And you can have an effect. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So building that relationship with them, building a rapport with them where you're more than just another person having a go at them. Because I think that's just it, is that their function is there to serve us and, you know, to look after their people. Absolutely. And one of the big things for any member of parliament is that they want to get re-elected. And so part of that is creating a, a, a rapport with their people yeah. because they want they want their people to re-elect them. So it's sort of almost part of their job description. And I'm not saying that cynically either, because 
um, I do think that they genuinely do want to hear from us. But it is part of what they want to do too, because they do want to get re-elected. And so your voice really does matter. Of course, there's other ways of participating too. And, you know, certainly through the Australian Christian Lobby, you can help with um, petitions and those sort of things. But there's other groups doing similar work as well. So you'd be able to find a similar type lobby groups who would who you your interests might align to yeah. that you think, okay, I can really throw my hand in here and I can help. Because when it comes to elections, these um, if there's really good members of parliament, we should be helping them every way we could. Absolutely. So we should be handing out leaflets for them at their at the voting booth, or you know, just send spend an hour to volunteer there if they're really good. Um, mm. Because we want to get good people in, and we want yeah. to get good people back in. Yeah, we do. We absolutely do. Okay, so what advice have you got for upcoming elections in general? But obviously, we've got the 2022 election coming. What do we as the people need to do to prepare ourselves so that we know who we are voting for? Because again, this isn't something that's just openly discussed. But I know it's something that weighs on my heart because I don't want to just tick a box willy nilly now. You know, yeah. I, 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 want to, I want to do my homework now. So what do I need to do to prepare? So the most important thing, um, is, apart from prayer, again, obviously we've got to really pray that the Lord will reveal his will to us. But the most important thing is to be informed. So find out who your candidates are. So you would already hopefully know who your sitting member is and you would know somewhat of their um, history in parliament, whether that's someone you want to still support or whether it's somebody that you think, no, this person needs to, needs to go. So I'd fi I find, I encourage everyone to find out all of the candidates and just, and work out in your own mind, what's important. What, yeah. what are, what are the really important issues to you that really matter to you yeah. and formulate just a few questions. I wouldn't say more than five, but m maybe three to five questions and send an email and once the election is announced and the candidates are known, they make sure that your their details are up because they want to actually get out and talk to people. Send an email, ring them, contact them somehow and find out what are, what are the answers to these questions to you? What what hmm. What is your opinion about the Born Alive bill that's, that George Christensen has put up, for instance? Yeah. Or, you know, so ask them the important questions to you and on that basis then you'll know who you can actually vote for. Also, there's no, there's never a wasted vote. Sometimes people say, oh, I've got to vote for a major party because it's a wasted vote. By all means, vote for a major party if that person actually represents your views. Yeah. Uh, but if a different party does, make sure that you just uh, preference all the boxes and your your vote will never be wasted. So yeah. if, you're, if you vote number one um, random, random, you know, Nalini party, um, and that and random Nalini doesn't get in, then it will go to the next, your vote will move down until it actually settles on the person who does win. So your vote right. will never be wasted. Okay, okay, that's invaluable to know. So what do you say to the person whose general response is, oh, I've always voted for da 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 da? <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, yeah, I like, I really think that we should not have that sort of. Uh, loyalty to any earthly organization. I agree. So um, certainly I think that we need to look at who the people are because that person is going to represent you. Yeah. So just like um, it's sometimes confusing, you know, when the census comes out, uh, people like you and I don't really want to put our denomination down. We actually want to put Christian, but we have to put our denomination. Okay. Yeah. So because you and I, Whilst we are like I'm, I'm proudly a Baptist. Yeah, I'm really happy to say that. But that's not that's not my identity. My identity yeah. is found in Christ, and yeah. so our identity shouldn't be found in a denomination, and neither should it be found in a political party. So we need to look at all the parties, see exactly what they're standing for. The party matters, and to a degree, who the prime minister it does matter as well. But the person you're voting for is not the prime minister usually, unless you're in his electorate. The person you're voting for is the person who's going to represent your views yeah. in Parliament. And they're either going to represent them well or they're going to trash or them. Or not. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have a responsibility. I think the days of sitting on our totty are behind us. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, this leads me to a 
the question that I've been wanting to ask you all month. <laughs> there is so much unraveling just within Australia right now, okay? It's actually scary to see the direction in which our nation is heading. I know the one thing that many Australians are asking is what can I do because things need to change, they cannot continue as they are. So many decide to show up to the rallies, for instance, to attend the peaceful protests with the idea that the more of us who show up, the less likely it is that our government will just ignore us because after all, their job is to speak for and represent the people, right? But instead, our government throws us into the same pile as extremists. So now what do we do? Just don't be, don't be extreme. So um, I don't think that we can be surprised. Uh, we shouldn't be caught off guard by that um, feeling of alienation from our culture. Yeah. Um, you know, Jesus warned us about it. He said, don't, don't think it's strange about the fiery trials. Hmm. He said, don't uh, be surprised when they hate you because they hated me first. Wow. So I don't think that we can avoid those fiery trials and being lumped in with the crazies. But just don't be crazy too because yeah. I think... I think too often Christians can be weird without needing to be weird. There's enough <laughs> about us. True. There's enough about us that's weird that we don't yeah. need to be weird. We don't need to add to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. So stay away from conspiracy theories. Um, stick to what the Bible says. You know, I, I love the verse in Hebrews. It talks about that God is shaking the world um, yeah. to do things, you know, that he's, he's going to shake the world. And I think we're in a yeah. I think we're in a shaking time. Yeah. I think God is shaking the world. And, you know, if we look back over history, there have, been, there have been times when God has done amazing things and new works. And, and we could be on the cusp of something like that because at the moment we're all being shaken incredibly. But I think what I would say to people too about your question, and it's a really important question, is make sure that your focus is on Christ and not on causes. Yeah. So no matter how good your cause is, and I am, I am caught up in causes. That's my, my work is often, you know, I'm, I am on the cause for outdoor advertising to be G rated. I am on the cause for ending abortion you know, there are really important causes, but if the cause becomes my focus and yeah. not Christ, I've lost the point and I've lost yeah. the plot and I, and I can so quickly get off the track. So our priority um, has to be on the centrality of Jesus. It's not, it's not that causes are unimportant. I, I, I think they are important, but they are secondary. They, ha they must be secondary. Um, and when I say secondary, I don't even mean, I mean, they don't, even, they don't come before our family. Like there's, you know, there's so many things that God has called us to put as priorities in our yeah. life. Yeah. But, you know, our generation needs to, needs to see us involved in these causes i agree not in a weird way they need to see us involved in causes that that we can back up from scripture and say Look, this is what god says about this and yeah. this is why it matters to me yeah. um and not get caught up in conspiracy theories like just too many people at the moment christian and non-christian um uh, are getting caught up in things that are actually taking our eyes off jesus i believe yeah yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, then that means I'll be at the next peaceful protest. So you may hear news that I've been arrested. <laughs> well, if you are, I will bake you a special cake. And don't tell anybody, but there'll be a nail file in it. But just as long as you keep that a secret between you and me, I'll put a nail file in the I cake. I love it. And I you'll be it. able to hack I'll be able to. I'll be able to get yep. that. Yep, I'm yep, there yep. for you, babe. I'm I mean, there for you, babe. I'm sure a spoon would be better, but yeah, yep. nail file's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so taking it out of just Australia viewpoint, because I do have a lot of listeners that listen in from other countries. Obviously, there's a lot going on around the world, okay, that, that right now that I think can leave a lot of people feeling extremely anxious. I've spoken to a lot of people who have been really rattled by the events of late. What would you like to say to anyone who's listening right now who's just so overwhelmed by it all? Yeah, I, the only answer I can really give is to point them back to Jesus because so if you're, if you're watching and you're a believer, then Jesus says, fear not. He says it over and over again. Don't be afraid. Um, you know, in the middle of the storm on the boat, yeah. he said, don't be afraid. Why are you afraid? But remember too 
that when he was on that boat, he had actually sent the disciples into that storm. He, when he, he was on the shore and he could mm. see them in the storm and he didn't immediately go to them. He allows us to go through storms because wow. it draws us back into him. Yeah. So he knew the disciples were going into a storm. He actually sent them into the storm. And he left them there for a while and then he walked to them on the water and scared the living daylights out of them. They thought they'd seen a ghost. So it went from bad to worse. Like it's yeah. like, you know, they were on the boat and all of a sudden Jaws music starts. It was pretty bad. <laughs> so um, he, he sees us in the storm. He cares and he has promised never to leave us. If you're not a believer and you're, um, you're fearful, then I would say find out about Jesus. Yeah. But can I also just say that, you know, there is a lot to be concerned about at the moment. Yeah. And so it should drive us to our knees. Yeah. But wherever we are, and, I, and we, we here in Australia are really blessed. To a large extent, we have been spared the worst of the COVID pandemic. We um, are not seeing, we're not fleeing from the Taliban, such as in Afghanistan. Mm. You know, we, we just, we have a relatively stable government. We have a relatively free nation. doesn't mean that we take that for granted because yeah. there are many ways in which we can see it slipping away, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. But we are really blessed. And so um, in other nations, please know that we're actually praying for, for people around the world as well as we see some of the tough stuff that's happening. Yeah, for sure. I love that. I really love that. Wendy, thank you so much for coming today and just speaking your truth. I really appreciate it. We are going to close with a little game I like to play with all my people because the topics are quite heavy. So it's called okay. On Your Marks, Gets It Go. Okay, you didn't warn me about this, but I, I, I'm okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm good. You, you did ask if you could trust me at the start. So. True. <laughs> Okay, so it's going to be 10 personal questions that you have to answer as quickly as possible. Okay? Okay. You ready? Yep. All right. Yep. On your marks, get it, go. What was the last TV show you binged on? Oh, the news. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I really don't watch TV. How sad is oh, that? No, that is sad. <laughs> okay, number two, what's your favourite colour? Yellow. Yellow. Oh, number three, what's an ideal date with your man? Uh, walking around South Bank, getting an ice cream, and then fish and chips. Oh, I love that. Oh, yes, obbly gobbly fish and chips. Number four, paint us a snapshot of an everyday moment in your life that makes you smile. Uh, seeing a picture of my grandchildren on Facebook. Oh, I love that. Who's your favourite human on the planet? My husband. Of course. What's your preference, cat or dog? Dog. Oh, you're a dog girl. Mm. What do you think of garden gnomes? Oh, I love them. Yeah. Ah! Have we, my, my daughter's 18th birthday was a garden gnome rally and we hid garden gnomes all over our city and people had to find them. Are you serious? Can I just say the different responses I get from people when I ask this question? Everybody like, who went home from the party, they didn't get a party bag. They were 18, so that would have been embarrassing, but they all got a garden gnome. Oh, I love it. Are you a tea or coffee drinker? Both. Uh, no? tea, in, tea first up in the morning and then coffee during the day and tea late at night. It's a bookend. I love that. How do you handle stress? Uh, I just sit on the couch and turn on the TV. To watch the news. <laughs> to watch the news. That's really sad, isn't it? It usually is 24-7, you know. Yeah, that's sad. I am a sad human being. You're waking me up to me. Okay, last question. What are you most grateful for in your life? I'm grateful for a Christian home and family that protected me from a lot of decisions that I would have made if I had not had them because I'm a fairly, um, uh, you know, I, I sort of go out and do things without thinking. So I'm an act without thinking. And if I hadn't had a Christian family, I think wow. I could be on a very different track. It's one of the reasons mm -hmm. why I, I um, have a passion for young people or women who are caught up in some awful situations because oh. I think, there, but by the grace of God, I could be. And, and I do believe that um, I could have made a lot of really bad decisions without a godly home. Wow, Wendy, that's so mm -hmm. powerful. I'll make sure that all your social links and access to you is made available. Is there any closing thought you want to bring? To uh, the I just really loved talking to you. And thank you for doing what you're doing, because I just think it's part of, of just um, keeping people connected and just keeping people knowing what's going on. I love it. I love what you're doing. I love you. Thank you.